Thank you for joining us today. This is We've Got Issues. We've Got Issues is a nonpartisan, citizen-based forum where we look at issues of interest to the Tri-Cities. First, I'd like to thank the Tri-Cities Community TV for making this program possible. Before we get started with today's interview, I'd like to acknowledge that this program is taking place on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded lands of the Coquitlam First Nation. We thank the Coquitlam people who continue to take care of these lands and all that is above and below. Today we're talking to Megan Lati, who's running for mayor of Port Moody. Megan, thanks for joining us today. So happy to be here. Excellent. I'm sorry that we haven't met before. This is, it, this is, is new that? to me. Why have Why we is, not met I don't before? Know. I don't know, because I'm nobody and you're on I, council. I, yeah. uh, what I want to do is find out first about you, because mm -hmm. um, I don't know anything about you. I should know more about you. I mean, we have this little program going on, but That's I don't. Okay. I don't know. So uh, let's hear it from you. <sighs> well, I was um, a young mother uh, with three small kids, and found out about a development that was happening in Port Moody. This is back in about 1994, 95. Okay. And I, it was um, a development that was occurring up uh, and in uh, the North Shore of Port Moody. And I got very involved in trying to stop it from happening because there was a beautiful tract of land up there that was, um, it, that had a, uh, a lot of environmental value to it mm -hmm. and uh, wetlands and things like that. And, so I got involved in, um, I guess, fighting against that with a small group of Port Moody residents, and we all actually ran for council. Most of us did. And um, some of us got elected in 96. In 96. And that piece was of that land you? was, was uh, that you? it was me. Okay. I got, I topped the polls in 1996. 96. And awesome. for several years after that, uh, several terms after that, actually. Um, so that was Burt Flynn Park, which was okay. later known as Burt Flynn Park. Okay. So my, um, my, pos my feeling um, and my sort of driving force behind everything I've done has been about um, eliminating urban sprawl and protecting the environment Okay. for the last, uh, well, since 1996. I did take one term off between 2011 and 2014 to uh, pursue some, some of my um, employment opportunities. I was promoted to be the provincial director for um, a large uh, post-secondary education company, so okay. I, or institution, so I, um, I took that time off to go. It was a lot of traveling, and it just wasn't for me, so I okay. came back. You came back. All yeah. right. All right. So and so and so that you came back, and in what year was it that you came back? I I, le I was gone for one term between 2011 and 2014. 2014, so, and yeah. so you've been on council since then. You've yes. been a councillor, and so that's got to be pretty um, interesting uh, over that period of time. Uh, since since then, because if I'm not mistaken, that whole fight for Burt Flynn Park came, came around again. Well, it's funny. I, I think about that, and I think, wow, it's it's this this piece of land is so important to the community mm -hmm. and it's so valued mm -hmm. and um, it's not surprising that has it that has come up again because sure. when we put the road right of way in um, back in 99 when we did the referendum and put it in it was I didn't I wasn't comfortable with that at the time because I thought this is going to cause problems down the road right but what you know we were looking at as you know um, I guess a council back then was we didn't want to we didn't want to fetter future council's decisions because we don't know what's going to happen. Right. Uh, so the feeling at the time was it's just a way to make sure that um, that we don't increase traffic on Ioka Road. I mean, that was the big issue back then. Yeah. Uh, was, you know, if something was to happen out there, what's going to happen to Ioka Road? Well, this is a solution, a potential solution. Right. So that was why it was put in there in the first place. Okay. Were you pro the road or? or, you, or? I am. I have never been in favor of a road through Burt Flynn Park. That right. is not my, my. Um, that's not where I'm coming from. My my feeling was that unless that we need to find an alternative. Yeah. Um, I felt that, you know, let's just put it this way: if if the road right of way. Um, was, it, the road right of way has been removed. Mm -hmm. I did not support the removal of the right of way. I thought it was not necessary at the time. We haven't really saved anything because a future council, let's say 10 years down the road, if they, if they do determine that, they, that that's the right thing to do, mm -hmm. they can come in and, and put a road through there. Okay. There's nothing stopping them. Okay. So we really have not done anything other than, uh, well, I guess to me, it seemed like a bit of a political football. Right. Um, 
and people get very emotional, and I understand that. Yeah. Um, and it's fine, because once the decision was made, I supported uh, facilitating how we pay for that, because that's the responsible thing to do. Uh, so the, the decision to remove the right-of-way was one decision, and then the decision on how to go about doing it was a whole other exercise, which, right. I, which yeah. I was in support of. Yeah. It's a decision of council. You have to support a decision of council. Right. So, um, you know, sometimes there's no pleasing anybody. Yeah, it's, well, and that's the hardest thing on councils, right? There are lots of opinions, lots of... Well, I mean, having lots of opinion on council is a good thing. Yeah. It, it provides for diversity of opinion and diversity of decision-making opportunities because mm -hmm. the more information that you can have at the table, mm -hmm. the more well-rounded and well-thought-out your decisions can be. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I'm going to jump back a little tiny bit, mm -hmm. though, because I'm interested um, with regards to, because you want to be mayor. Yeah. So where, what would be your position with regards to Bert, that right, right away through Bert Flynn now? Like if 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 that comes up um, in the next, if you're mayor and that comes up in this next term, where do you stand on that? I I support the decision of council as it stands right okay. now. Okay, as it stands right now. Yep. All right. Okay. Um, and I'm trying to understand something. Like okay. so, I, I don't want to spend too much time on this Bert Flynn thing. <laughs> um, but I like Burt Flynn Park because it's. A I park. love Burt Flynn Park. It, it's it's park. the whole reason I'm on council. Yeah. It's it's been my it's been my almost okay. I would say my life's um, you know a, a big accomplishment yeah. that I've had in my life. Yeah. But you was you mentioned that park. The, so you and when you said that earlier you said that the issue was Ioko Road having like Ioko Road going out towards I'm um, guessing Balcarra and uh, Anmore that that was the issue, the traffic on that. But now that that isn't what the issue in, is anymore, is it? It's more the development that on those Ioka lands, the, the I possibility think, of that. I think that um, Ioka Road and the traffic on Ioka Road is still the issue. It, it, how And the concern around that residents have mm -hmm. around um, development that could occur that would increase the traffic, you know, I don't know if you've ever been out there, but you just try going out there on a Thursday during uh, garbage mm -hmm. day. Like it, it, it's there's an issue there, and with the increased number of people in the parks, it is still it continues to be an issue. And let's let's be I'm going to just be really clear here. We have a deep sea port in the old Burrard Thermal mm -hmm. um, location, and the, the the government has already said and uh, that this is a very valuable piece of land. And Robin Sylvester, who is the CEO of Port of Vancouver has has actually said that they're looking actively looking um, for this type of, of land to be used. These are this is the most valuable kind of land that you can have. It's accessible by rail. It's accessible by sea. So th there is no doubt in my mind that that will be reactivated at some point. So there's going to be another concern that's added, another layer of concern. Mm -hmm. We have um, also got the the knowledge and understanding that in the next few years we will be replacing all of the utilities along Ioko Road. So there will be have to be some discussion around how is that road going to look and the community needs to be part of those discussions. And I, one of the things that really bothered me about the whole Burt Flynn thing and the, the, this most recent one and uh, the conversations around this is that we as a community haven't really had a good opportunity to come together to talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, we've, we never had a, uh, a town hall meeting. Mm -hmm. We never had a community gathering of the people that live in the area and also the people that, that live in Heritage Mountain that, that visit that park on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. We need to come together as a community to talk about the issues, mm -hmm. right? And to talk about what the concerns are and try to come up with some alternatives to um, I don't like what my goal would be would be to find an alternative to to what we've what we've got, which is either four laney Ioko Road. Mm -hmm. And what's the alternative to that? So I want to find that alternative. Okay. And I sure okay. as heck hope it's not the park because that's not something I would support. Yeah. I want to have like a major longer conversation about this, but there yeah. are, but I, I'm not being fair to you. Um, yeah, because we're just sort of concentrating on that's one That's right. Thing. What I'd like to do is know more about what your platform is, the things that you want to talk about. Not that I wanted to talk about Bird Flynn, but <laughs> that it was it just, it came up. So, yeah. um, but what I'd like to know is about what, like, what are your priorities as mayor? What do you, where do you want to go with this? 
You know, we have a lot of challenges in the and city. And why do you want to be mayor? <laughs> okay, uh, you know, I've never actually wanted to be mayor. I've never, a lot of people over the years have asked me to be mayor, sure. have, have asked to me to run yeah. for yeah. mayor, and I've never felt the need. Yeah. Uh, I was working with mayors um, that I could work with, that I felt valued at the table with, that I was contributing in a way that was very fulfilling to me. And um, over the years, I've learned a lot about um, sort of what it takes, what, what's needed mm -hmm. um, in the mayor's chair and t in order to have a functional council. I've been on the whole spectrum mm -hmm. of councils and I understand that it really starts in the mayor's chair. The, the entire um, experience at council in my estimation is about the tone and, and the um, sort of the atmosphere that's set by the mayor. Sure. My, um, I am known for being extremely inclusive and collaborative. My goal is always to, to find out what everybody has to offer and to try and find a consensus and sure. to try and drive decision making through that kind of, um, that kind of an atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So in this situation, I feel that that's what's needed. I, I feel that I can bring that to the table because we have had some, a difficult four years. Mm -hmm. And the community has told us that they want to change. Mm -hmm. um, they, we did a citizen survey okay. and, you know, in my time on, on council, we have always been like, there's a, there's a little area where people can judge their council. And we've always, we've always been rated high eighties, high nineties, uh, like, you know, very, very high satisfaction from our residents because mm -hmm. we've usually been able to uh, maintain things in a very cordial manner. Um, this last um, one that we did this summer was very telling. It came in at 48%, uh, 52%, mm. depending on what survey you're talking about. Some sure. were mailed, some were phoned. But the, to me, that's a, a very, very strong signal that there's, there needs to be a change at, at the mayor's chair. Oh, okay. In my mind, that, okay. and, and in the council, because there's, there was some very clear indication that the community wasn't happy. Right. So I think that I can bring the kind of leadership that's required okay. to bring the team together and to, to really focus on what we're there to do, which okay. is provide good governance, lead policy, and oversee, uh, oversee the, um, the city. What would you do different than, say, the last administration to make sure that the, you, you'd be getting better reviews, so to speak, from the, from the population? I can tell you what is needed. Okay. And what is needed at the table is um, the opportunity for people to feel heard. Okay. For people to feel valued. All right. And not just the people at the council table. Right. But the people in the community as well. Okay. There was a lot of um, a lot of attempts to divide and a lot of way a, a lot of a lot of discussions that were extremely divisive that took place and they didn't need to be. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our community should be coming together. I'm about bringing people together to have conversations. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of um, obstruction of that going on because if, if, if somebody comes into uh, the environment and has an agenda and they want, their, they want to see what they want to have happen, happen, then there's no room for other uh, discussions to take place. My, my approach is to, I'm a solution finder, so uh, if, if there's an issue, let's find a solution. I would rather be part of the solution than part of the problem, and I feel like there was a lot of problems that were not solved in this last term um, because there wasn't enough of that attitude at the table. Right, okay. All right, so I, and again, I think I'm taking you into a position, uh, like starting to talk too about much about this thing. About the end thing. of this thing? So, yeah. So <laughs> let's... No, we don't have... We, we let, did let's, slice it Let's up. go again to... Um, back to what other things are on your platform. What are the things... Wh where do you want to... Where do you want to see Port Moody go in the next... Um, in the next term? I want to see an inclusive and um, connected community. So my... What I want to see is the is a community that comes together and deals with issues um, in a different manner. Okay. I, I I think that there's a lot of there's a lot of issues out in the community. We have traffic. 
you know, I have I have some ideas on how we can manage traffic, mm -hmm. both internally and um, regionally. Um, I can share those with you. Yes, please. Okay. Please, so one absolutely. of the so one of the things is is that um, in that in that uh, citizen satisfaction survey that we got, they they not only said that they wanted to see a change at at council, they also rated transportation and development as their top two issues. Mm -hmm. So. You know, I, I, I have to, you then have to look at, okay, so transportation is an issue, but it's not an issue that's unique to Port Moody. I mean, we have tra traffic issues all over the, in the region, region. In, in the Tri-Cities. But, but really, um, most of the traffic that comes through Port Moody is going through Port Moody, not stopping in Port Moody. Yeah. And so, I mean, in fact, if you were to, to if you were to never build another unit in Port Moody, which we've been doing <laughs> up until most recently, um, you'd still have the same amount of traffic. Traffic's been an issue since I came on to council in 96. So what I'm trying to point out is, is that it's a regional issue. Yeah. It's not a local issue. Yeah. And so we can't find a local solution. I mean, we can, we can try and we have a um, master transportation plan where that we're implementing, but that only goes so far. Mm -hmm. If you have a regional problem, you need to bring the region in to talk about, to find a solution. Mm -hmm. We used to have something called the Murray-Clark Connector, which was an alignment that took traffic from the Barnett Highway and bypassed that real bottleneck choke point that we have um, that runs traffic through through Port Moody at the Murray over at the Moody Street overpass. Okay. Um, I'm I'm suggesting that we get Translink back at the table and we tell them that this is a regional problem; it's not going away, and we need your help. And so I think that we can probably uh, come up with some some uh, a new alignment that involves some of the development that's happening down there get the developers to pay partly get translink to to participate in in fixing this problem because it's a regional problem mm -hmm. we can at least alleviate some of the problems uh, some of the traffic issues that we have another um, thing that comes up is we have two transit stations we have two skytrain stations and a west coast express when i ask people on the doorstep why aren't you taking transit because one of the th one of my goals is to uh, around you know the the existential threat of climate change we want to get people out of their cars mm -hmm. so why aren't you taking transit we have this this way for people to get around it's not convenient people tell me you know i understand that there are some people that can't take transit for various reasons but there's a lot of people who can and if it's not convenient what can we do to fix that i've talked to translink and i'm i'm um, in I've, ha I've started discussions with, with, mem with TransLink about bringing in um, a pilot for Transit on Demand. Okay. Transit on Demand is something that is very unique. Uh, it's not, we don't have it here. Mm -hmm. They have it in the East. They have it in Ontario. They also have it down in California and other, in other um, highly populated locations. Sure. And basically what it is, it's an Uber-style last-mile transit option. You have, a, you have an app. Yeah. It's door to station service provided by TransLink. Right. They have a pilot project in Bowen Island and they have had that going for a couple of years now and it's very successful. Okay. I'd like to see that here. Yeah, that's a cool idea. I want to see the, this, the residents that are living out in, up in Shoreline Circle and out in uh, a little further afield, maybe up in Heritage Mountain, who mm -hmm. say it's just not convenient mm -hmm. to, to, to wait for the bus or to drive down and try and find parking at the station. Mm -hmm. Why can't you know? Why can't we give them an opportunity to ride on transit as well? Yeah. I also want to look at um, re in, reinvesting in and restarting the Shoreline Shuttle, which was um, an internal shuttle that we had. So it's another way to get people out of their cars. Mm -hmm. But it's 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 a seasonal loop that um, was paid for by we. It was a free service that we that we paid for, and it was determined that um, it was. Too much of a of a burden on the taxpayer by some of our um, by some of our council members, so it was cancelled mm -hmm. at the start of uh, the 2018 term. I'd like to have that come back. Maybe you know, it's it's a way to get people from Moody Center to Inlet to Pleasant Side um, around those areas, so they can go to the farmers market and the library, and mm -hmm. they can visit the art center and go to Brewers Row and mm -hmm. go to Rocky Point Park without bringing their cars. I think that that's a fantastic idea. Have you, have you ever been to Australia? You no, to but C that's on my bucket list. Okay, y y this is an excuse for you to go. <laughs> okay. Both the cities of City, uh, Sydney and Brisbane, out of their harbors, have a ferry service that goes all the way into the city that mm -hmm. take 
that by boat take people to see, would that not be excellent for Port Moody? to have a boat service that goes into Vancouver. Well, I, that that's speaking to something that's very, that I'm very passionate about. And what I'd really like to see is, you know, we are in we are a waterfront city, but I just want to just before we leave the the shuttle. Sure. I want to say that um, my vision is to have the you know, those people that are taking that shuttle are feeding the economy. Mm -hmm. They're going to shops and services in Moody Center and in in um, inlet, they're going to Newport from Moody Center. The, the shops and businesses, the businesses could be part of the solution in terms of helping to subsidize those as well. But instead of having it free, maybe you charge a dollar. But I want to bring that back. That's shocking. It sounds like you're talking about taxes. What do you mean? Subsidizing. If a business subsidizes something, that's a tax. No, but the, the businesses, if, if, it's, if they would like to sponsor it, let's say sponsor. Yeah. If they want to put in to allow for these I'm to, just giving you a hard time. to come to us. I'm giving you um, a hard time. <laughs> so we, going back to the waterfront, we sure. are a waterfront community. Yes. Yeah. Why do we not have a vibrant waterfront? Uh, why, Absolutely. why don't we have an opportunity for people to take to not only to to take um, transit but via water. Yeah. But why can't people come in on their boats and visit Port Moody and spend their dollars, mm -hmm. invigorate our economy, mm -hmm. uh, visit the shops and services, and then go home? So uh, like one of my biggest weaknesses is good ideas. I <laughs> like to have tons and tons of ideas. Is this on your platform or it is, is this a good idea? No, it absolutely is on my okay, platform. Because that's an awesome thing to do. That yeah. the reinvigoration of that would be fabulous. Well, we're talking about, we're probably talking about development that would take place down in the Flavel um, site. Mm -hmm. um, but we're not talking about towers here. Mm -hmm. If you've, have you been to the shipyards? In Port Moody. No, in, 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 um, in the, in, on the North Shore. They have a new, um, they have a new development oh, there. Oh, the shipyards in, in North Vancouver. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, 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 there. yes. It's beautiful. Their maximum tower height is 12 stories. Really? They're not. Yeah. They're not yeah. talking. We're not talking about massive density. We're talking yeah. about a place. A, a, I would like to see a marina, mm -hmm. and a small, eco-certified marina that is mm -hmm. that is environmentally um, sustainable, mm -hmm. and a small, perhaps maybe even a small boutique hotel. Mm -hmm. down there so that we can have people come via water and visit us. Mm -hmm. Why why not? It becomes a place it comes a place to go and see it's and bring people into your community. It's certainly a a, a talking point for the community. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'd really love to be to to be able to sit down and see see what the community has mm -hmm. to say about that because so, it would really revitalize our waterfront. So have you done anything like that? Like because you've mentioned it, you mentioned it before. We should have done that with Bert Flynn. Have you done that? No, I want to do it now. Okay. Yeah, okay. As the mayor. When's it going to happen? This... Oh, so you're well, going to do it as a mayor? Yes. Okay. As the mayor. Of course. You can do it. That's that's the you, plan. You don't have to be the mayor. Do it. Well, no. I mean, I'm not running for council. Yeah. Right. So I, I, you know, I've I've talked about I have talked about these types of things in the past, but now I really feel like um, these are the types of things that the community is wants to yeah. wants to talk about. And the opportunity as mayor will give you a better opportunity to to do it without. Yeah, without I believe other so. People saying, I think so. Holding um, yeah. When we talk about um, other things on my platform, I, you know. One of the things that's really important to me and is and has been a priority is bringing in se more seniors housing and mm -hmm. bringing in more affordable housing. Mm -hmm. So one of the biggest stumbling blocks to bringing in affordable housing is the cost of land and using utilizing private uh, private land for those purposes. And I'd really like to see us use some of our public land for that purpose. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about selling the farm or giving away our land, but leveraging that land for that purpose okay. and bringing in other amenities at the same time. So it's it's public land for public use. Right. Um, we have a the old fire hall site, perfect location for a new library. We can work that into a plan with um, with and bring in uh, uh, affordable housing as well as market housing, if, if that's what the community wants to see, and uh, really sort of try and leverage our opportunities with our public land because right now it's just an empty lot. And we're having a really hard time finding um, those opportunities. These are partnerships that you would have with BC Housing mm -hmm. and um, other nonprofit housing um, mm -hmm. providers. So, so, and and that then it's something that I'd hope to to get to more. But I've 
taking you off in all these other directions. But about it, this is something that would deal with that affordability because because that's something that all the tri cities are. Yeah, to it's deal not with. just the tri cities. Affordable housing is is a problem across the country. Mm -hmm. uh, we and it's it's this it's like a we have this uh, this issue around the cost of land, the high rent the high rents that are out there. The fact that construction isn't being able to keep up with the demand. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we've got a lot of supply chain issues. I mean, that, that is, has probably has something to do with the pandemic, and it also has to do with other situations that are going on in the world right now. Mm -hmm. And then we also have people moving here. We had 100,000 people move to the Lower Mainland in 2021. Wow. That was during a pandemic. Mm -hmm. Where are these people going to live? We have a backlog of, uh, I think it's 85,000 homes, mm -hmm. a backlog, and there's 117,000 people on waiting lists, and we, we have 35,000 people that are, that are um, or they've identified that we need 35,000 new units of affordable housing in the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of work to do. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm not suggesting that we take it all on in Port Moody, because we're a small town, mm -hmm. and, but we can do our part, make it Port Moody uh, centric. We've done, I think, a good job with uh, developments like um, Newport Village. And those are the types of um, environments that I want to create. Mm -hmm. A diversity of housing, low rise, mid rise, high rise, where, ne where appropriate. Mm -hmm. And create a low carbon lifestyle at Moody Center. Mm -hmm. Those are opportunities that we have that we really need to uh, we really need to start talking about. One of the most frustrating things about this past term, there was no conversation about these things because there's resistance. But, you know, I understand there's resistance. There's, there are some candidates out there talking about 24 towers that are going to happen between St. John's and Rocky Point. There's a plan that's been put on hold um, pending more conversation with the community. This is a great opportunity for us to say, if we don't want that, what do we want? Mm -hmm. We have a fantastic opportunity to really do it well and to create a world-class neighborhood that we can all be proud of. And I truly believe that the community wants to see development there. It's just, they just don't want, they're just worried about it looking like what's happening in Coquitlam or what's happening in Burnaby. It's never gonna be that way because that's not Port Moody. Right. If, um, if we could have an opportunity as a community to sit down, I think what we'd hear is the community wants a grocery store. They want amenities in Moody Center. They want a new, they want a new rec center. They want a new Kyle Center. They want an indoor swimming pool. They want things. We're not gonna be able to buy those things for them. These things come with, with and along with um, the opportunities to, to grow in those areas like Moody Center. Okay. Megan? Yeah. It's unfortunately. Uh, Are we done? I, th I think that we. I think that there we had an opportunity to talk about a lot more, and I would really like to do that. Hopefully, we'll do it in the future. Yeah. But um, we have. Yes, we're not done. We're not done. We've just run out of time. That's Aww. all. So maybe what we'll do is we'll meet again in There's the future. There's so many things to talk about. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, we really appreciate it, yeah. and we look forward to talking to you again. I look forward to talking to you again. All right. Thank you. This is We've Got Issues, um, speaking with Megan Lottie about her run for mayor in this upcoming uh, civic election in Port Moody. Thanks for joining us.